guys, this is Pretty Joe, and this is the first video in building a game in Unity. Now, what we're doing in this video is creating the main menu, which is definitely the easiest point to start from in any game. So, to start off, we'll just open up a new project in Unity. Uh, sure. Now there's going to be two ways that I'm going to show you how to make the menu. One is going to be using Unity's text mesh, and the other one is going to be using delegates with C Sharp. Now I'm going to start off, we'll use this as our level one. And all we're going to do here is just show the player that they've made it to the first level. To do that, we're just going to create a simple little particle effect that will just be placed in front of the camera. And we'll just fiddle around with a few of these things. And there, right, we're good to go for this level. Now, I'm going to do the text mesh first because it's definitely the easiest. And. So you start a new scene, and all right. Since this text mesh is actually in the world, we're going to create a simple scene using just a cube, just so that there's something else in front of the camera. And we'll just stretch that out. All right. Awesome. And save this as 3D menu. <clears throat> Alright. So before we start, let's go into the build settings and put our menu in there and then level one. You're obviously going to want to have your main menu before any levels just so the player runs into it. Um, and now our next step would be to get a true type font from Windows to use as our text. They're pretty easy to find. Just go to your C drive or D or whatever your main drive is, and go to Windows, go to Fonts, and there's tons of these things in here. So if you can't find one, you're too picky. I'm picking Comic Sans because it sucks and everybody hates it. Alright, so copy it and paste it in your project folder in your assets. Now, there's, if, you're probably only going to need one, so I'll just get rid of that. Okay, never mind. Now, I'll delete it here then. Alright, now when you import a font and you're using it in a 3D space, you're going to want to increase the font size. The bigger you stretch out your font, the more pixelated it's going to get. So when you increase the font size, it literally just increases the size of the texture, so you reduce the pixelation. I'll just set it to 40 for now. And characters, we're going to want to go to ASCII. And there, that's good to go. Now create a 3D text, and here we have our Hello World. Now, what I like to do is I set the anchor in the middle center and alignment to center. That way it just keeps things neater and just, I like to do it that way. Now, this will just be the title, I guess, so we'll just call it Main Menu. And for the scripts that we're going to attach, we'll attach a box collider. Now, for the Start Menu, and or Start Game and Quick Game sections, we'll just duplicate, duplicate uh, the Main Menu. And just drag it down. 
we'll change this to quit game. Change this one to start game. And sure, let's make it smaller so it stands out from the main menu. Just change it to 0.6. And you can really move these wherever you want. I'm just doing it this way because I want to. Um, yeah, let's name these up here too. That way we have we know which is which. So this is basically all you need to set up this scene. So we can just start the scripts now. So I use C# -sharp as a or personal preference. You can use JavaScript if you want to. Um, if you can code in one language, any other language shouldn't be that hard to pick up. So let's call this script menu object. And double click to open it up. And depending on what your default is, I have Mono Develop. You might have Visual Studio, or you might have Unity's built-in editor, which isn't very good. No offense, guys at Unity. Um, all right, so change the class name to Menu Object. Oops. All right, there's a few simple functions that we're going to use to get this going. These are already built into mono behavior, so we're just overriding them basically. First one is on mouse enter void on mouse enter. What we're going to do is um, take the material that has the text in it and change the color of it when the mouse goes over it. This and a few of the other functions in here is why we needed the box collider because it will not detect anything if there is no collider on it at all. So to change the color, it's simple. One line, go render dot material dot color equals color red or blue or whatever you want it to be. Now for the next one. We want to change the color of it back when the mouse leaves. So on mouse exit. And then do basically the same thing. But change the color back. Really simple. And test it out. Oh, before you test it out, you have to attach it. Now we test it out. Yay! All right, but these really don't do anything at this point. So our next function will be on mouse down, which will detect whether or not the user clicks on it. Now, since we have two different things, this is going to be doing. Quick game is obviously going to quit game, and start game is going to end the level. Instead of making two separate scripts, we'll just make a quick boolean that we can change in the editor called is quit, and default it to false. Now on most down, if is quit application dot quit else application dot load level you can either use a number or the string name I set it to so I'll just use that actually you know that'll be one because it starts at zero okay so this should all work for quick game Make sure you set this to true in here. Now, it won't do anything in the editor, but uh, if you were to build it, it would exit out of the program. And if you hit start game, 
we load up the next level. And we get that pretty little particle effect. Ooh. All right. Now, our next one, which is using delegates in C Sharp, it's a little more complex, but you get more functionality out of it. You just don't get the nice little 3D text going on here. It's like with this, you can have it animating, have things walking in front of it. The other one is all on GUI. All right, so create a new scene and save this as delegate menu. All right. Now create a new script. This is all being done through code. Rename. All right. Delegate menu. Double click that to open it up. This one is a little different. Okay, so first off, we'll make a few private variables. We have to actually declare the delegate. And you declare it as a function. So we'll go private, delegate, void, menu, delegate. And then if you want to actually use it, you have to go private, menu, delegate. Wow. There we go. Um, menu function. Now, since this is using all on GUI, I prefer to create variables holding the screen size and button size because on GUI gets called more than once a frame usually sometimes like three or four times so if you're accessing the static screen class and getting properties from it you're really putting a lot of strain on your processor that you don't need to it's more efficient to just store these values in memory so you can just quickly access them and pull what you need. So I'm going to make four floats for screen height, screen width, uh, button height, button width. Alright, now in the start we're going to set these values. So screen height is equal to screen dot height and we'll be doing the same for width except for screen dot width. And for the button height, since we already grab these values, we may as well just use them here. So, button height. Um, I'm only going to make two buttons in this menu, so the buttons are going to be pretty big. So it'll be screen height times 0 0.3. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you put this F here. Because if you don't, it's going to create a double, and you're going to get a stupid error, and you're not going to know what's going on. Just make sure you do it. Same with button width. Um, let's go with 0.4. So these are going to be big buttons. We also need to set the menu function. So menu function equals, um, we'll just start it out with a quick um, press any key to continue. So any key. Now, I'm going to be making the any key function later. First I'll do on GUI and show you how easy it is to use this delegate. 
that's it. As long as you have this menu function in here, you can set the menu function to whatever you want and it'll automatically change it in the on GUI. I'll show you here. Void any key. Wow. If now we'll check if the user has pressed anything, which is literally input dot any key. And we just change the menu function to main menu, which will be a, the next function I throw in here. And if he hasn't, we'll just uh, go GUI dot label. I usually just go press any key to continue. If I'm doing all these things out of order, I'm not meaning to throw you off. I'm just just kind of my way of doing things. All right, so <clears throat> now we're going to create the label, which is going to say press any key to continue, and we're going to have to choose a position. I'm going to choose the center of the screen, which will be screen width times. I'm going to give it a bit of an offset, um, just because if I'm going to be having more than, say, one letter, it's going to start at the middle of the screen and move towards the right. And that's not really what I want. So I'll go 0.45 F and then screen height times 0.45 F. And that's not a lot of text, so we don't need all that much room. So we'll just go 0.1 F. And Now, one of the things you might be thinking, say, hey, that's only one-tenth of the screen height. Why aren't you just dividing it by 10 instead of multiplying by 0.1? If you're really that curious, I doubt you are. This is kind of a pointless point to make. But it's actually cheaper um, processor-wise to multiply something by decimal than it is to divide. And since this is being called multiple times a frame, I'm multiplying everything just to make it that much cheaper. Now, I'm just going to create the menu function um, but leave it empty for now just so that we can test this out. Um, any errors? Oh. Yes, make sure that says void on GUI. Alright, so no errors. Good to go. Throw this on the main camera. And does it work? Yes, it does. And if we hit any key, this would be where our main menu would happen. But it's empty. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this text centered that way it's not all just kind of on one side so gui.skin.label since that's what we're doing the text in alignment equals text anchor dot middle center and we also go with, actually, we'll try that. That should be good enough, actually. Oh, that's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. There we go. Let's see, it's not a huge difference, but it does look nicer that way. All right, now our main menu. <clears throat> Okay, so all we're going to do is just create two buttons and if the players clicked on them, do what they need to do. 
right, so GUI.button, new rect, and for the string, let's go start in. And this should be inside an if block. And since it's going to be pretty much the same, we'll just copy and paste and go to quit game. Now, screen position. I'll go with screen width. Take away button width. 0 0.5 now what this does is it's going to take this entire screen subtract the button width and then divide that by 2 so it's going to center the button when I put the button within and screen height hmm, what should we choose here it's how high 0.3 well, let's we'll go with point one then. And then we'll just use button width and button height. And I'll just copy this over. I'll just change a few things for the quit button. Screen height will have to be, let's go with 0.5f. Ah. That way there's some space between the buttons and we know it's not overlapping. Uh, what is going on? Oh. Alright. So we'll actually put the code in to make it work. Application.quit. Application. Load level. I'll use level 1 this time. Good to go. And make sure you put this in the build settings too. Um, just so it's there. Now let's test it out. Press any key to continue. Uh, there's our buttons. Quick game doesn't work because we're in the editor. Start game. Loads up our level. And it's that simple to get a main menu going. It's not very pretty because this is like maybe a 10-15 minute video. I'm not going to make art for you in front of you. I'm a programmer. I'm a terrible artist. But uh, yeah, you can basically take that, take it a step further. If you're going to add an options menu, the delegate way is definitely the easiest way to go. Um, if you want to have main menu animations, um, the 3D is the way to go. You could even kind of mix and match between the two. I wouldn't, but it's your game. Do what you want with it. Anyways, this is Purdy Joe signing off, and catch me in my next video. Have a good one, guys.